This is a short film to describe how Class 37 SWAT Hellfire. The AWS Break Application Unit. Hello, my name is Dave, and I'm going to take you through the workings of the AWS Break Application Unit, like the ones fitted to Class 37s. Compressed air from the AWS DSD supply pipe. Enters the brake application unit here. Air flows to the DSD delay reservoir via a choke and check valve into the application valve, but not until a safe pressure has passed the low main reservoir protection valve. Once the required pressure has passed through the low main reservoir protection valve, Air pressure flows to the AWS delay reservoirs, to the control ports of the brake valve feed cutoff valves, and to the DSD delay reservoir. This pressure will be a maximum of 100 psi. There are two brake valve feed cutoff valves, one for each brake valve in their respective driving cabs. The cutoff valves are used when it is necessary to close the main air supply automatically when the control pressure from the brake application unit has fallen below a predetermined value, and to restore the main supply when the control pressure is re established. The control pressure is established at the ports of the brake valve feed cutoff valves. The cutoff valves now open to a low air pressure from the main reservoir to the driver's brake valves in each driving cab. It is then up to the driver to choose which brake valve to unlock and open to charge the brake pipe. When the driver charges the brake pipe, air pressure enters the brake application unit here. The normal pressure will be 5 bar, or 5.4 bar when overcharging. When the application valve is fully charged as previously described, it opens to equalize the pressure across the equalizing discharge valve, so that the valve is closed to prevent venting of the brake pipe. During the initial charge up, the pressure in the brake pipe, equalizing discharge valve, and a timing reservoir, will all be at atmospheric pressure. When the driver charges the brake pipe, pressure enters the equalizing discharge valve here. The pressure continues to the control side of the equalizing discharge valve, and also to a choke which leads to the timing reservoir. With the brake pipe pressure settled at 5 bar, the pressures in both chambers of the equalizing discharge valve, and the timing reservoir, will also be at 5 bar. When the driver's DSD or AWS activates, a pressure drop in the control ports of the DSD or AWS delay reservoirs causes the application valve to shut off the brake pipe from the timing reservoir. The application valve also connects the timing reservoir to the bulb which produces an immediate pressure reduction. Since the equalizing discharge valve is subject to timing reservoir pressure on one side and brake pipe pressure on the other, the fall in timing reservoir pressure causes this valve to open to reduce the brake pipe pressure to the same as that in the timing reservoir, and a service brake application ensues. At the same time, the pressure drop in the AWS DSD delay reservoirs closes the brake valve feed cutoff valve to prevent recharging of the brake pipe against the equalizing discharge valve exhaust.
The application valve also connects the timing reservoir to the bulb which produces an immediate pressure reduction, followed by a controlled reduction through the unbraked choke at a rate to suit unbraked trains. The braked unbraked magnet valve is de-energized open with the brake selector switch in the braked position. This switch is in number 2 and below the pass goods brake selector switch. Most 37s have had the braked unbraked switch taken out of use and plated over. Cancellation of an AWS application after a brake pipe reduction has started allows the AWS delay reservoir and the associated piping to recharge at a controlled rate. The rate OS recharge is such that the application valve opens to equalize the pressures across the equalizing discharge valve, which in turn closes to stop the venting of the brake pipe, but ensures that opening the brake valve feed cutoff valve is slightly delayed. This delay is just sufficient to ensure that a similar brake application occurs on all the vehicles before brake release takes place. To summarize, the braked unbraked magnet valve is de-energized, the valve is open and provides an additional exhaust to that in the application valve, to vent the timing reservoir at a rate to suit braked trains. On most 37s this is permanently de-energized. Under the control of timing reservoir pressure, the equalizing discharge valve opens to discharge the brake pipe to atmosphere, to apply the automatic brake at a service rate. The application valve is subject to control pressure from the AWS and DSD systems, and charges a timing reservoir from the brake pipe or vents the timing reservoir at a rate to suit unbraked trains. The low main reservoir protection valve causes a service brake application in the event of main reservoir pressure falling below a safe level, and prevents brake release until the main reservoir pressure has been re-established. The bulb provides a capacity to create an initial brake pipe reduction, sufficient to trigger off the quick service action of the distributors. For practical demonstrations or questions about the AWS brake application unit, please contact the owner of 37152 through Peak Rail or this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and enjoy the Hellfire Thrash.